Mr. Hodge. Commissioner, the next witness is Michael Kelly. I call Mr. Kelly. Mr. Kelly. Mr. Kelly, could I ask whether you would prefer to make an oath or take an affirmation? Uh, affirmation, thanks. Could you affirm the witness, please? I solemnly and sincerely. I solemnly and sincerely. Declare and affirm. Declare and affirm. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Will be the truth. Will be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Do sit down. Yes, Mr. Hunt. Thank you, Commissioner. Oh, I'm sorry. Your name is Michael Lawrence Kelly. Yeah, that's correct. And you've given your address to the commission? That's correct. And have you received a summons, Mr. Kelly, to uh, yeah. attend yes, here and give evidence? Yes. And you've got that there? I tend to the summons, Commissioner. The summons to Mr. Kelly will be Exhibit 3.87. Mr. Kelly, Mr. Kelly, you've also prepared a statement for the commission? Uh, that's correct. Commissioner, and it was dated the 24th of May 2018? Uh, correct. Are there any corrections you wish to make to your statement, Mr. Kelly? Uh, no. Thank you. And the statement is true? It is. Commissioner, I tender the statement. Exhibit 3.88, the statement of Mr. Kelly. Mr. Kelly, I just want to ask you some questions to begin with to allow the Commissioner to understand your background. And you're from Perth? That's correct. And that's where you live at the moment? That's correct. And that's where you've spent most of your working life? Uh, yes. And you finished high school in 1984? Uh, yes. And then you went to work for Rural and Industries Bank of Western Australia? Yep, that's correct. And that bank is what ultimately became known as Bank West? That's correct. And how long did you work for Bank West for? Uh, just short of 23 years. So you started in what, about 1985 and yep, finished? Yep. 2nd of January, 85, straight after New Year and finished on, the, I think it was the 20th of September, 2007. And just before you left Bankwest, what position did you hold? Uh, Director of Property Finance. And what was the responsibility of the Property Finance team? Uh, there was a Chief Manager above me. There was uh, teams of uh, five, five teams of three staff, and you're responsible for dealing with the large property exposures. So generally transactions that require funding of at least five million, at least five million uh, upwards. Uh, and uh, mainly it was just property specialists, so land subdivisions, apartment developments, uh, shopping centres, both investment and construction. And for property transactions where a loan of less than $5 million was required, what section would that type of transaction typically that, go? That ended in the commercial section of the bank. Although there was some overlapping. And we'll come to this, but two of the loans that we're concerned, or you're concerned with here, they ended up coming out of the commercial section of the bank, even though they involved more than $5 million. So That's right. correct. All right. And before you resigned from Bank West, you'd become involved in a company called Zencorp, is that right? Could you say Zengold? Called Zencorp? Zengold. Zengold, I'm sorry. Yep. And could you just explain what that company did? Uh, that was just a property development company. Uh, it just uh, had a single, single asset project up in a place called uh, Port Denison, which is uh, north of Perth, about 300 kilometres north. And it was just a um, 51 lot subdivision. And the, when you became involved, you were effectively went into partnership with somebody else, is that right? I was a minor shareholder in that particular company and uh, with uh, a number of other people. So we just formed a small syndicate and acquired it. And uh, one of the other directors, uh, they actually project managed it while I was still working in the bank. So I was a, a minor shareholder, but provided some you know, advice with structuring and financing, et cetera. And the person who project managed it, he then set up two other ventures, is that right? That's correct. And one of them is referred to as Silver Sun? That's correct. And the other is referred to as Wild Lines? Yep, that's correct. And 
silver sun and wild lions are the things that you've spoken about in your statement. That's correct. And so you became involved in the ventures that silver sun and wild lions were doing? That's correct. And what was your involvement? So it's just obviously in um, arranging the financing, uh, also cash flow, um, financial analysis, uh, the feasibility analysis, um, preparing um, uh, you know documents, etc., and uh, help structure up the deals. The uh, the uh, investors were family and friends, so it was a number of people that we knew who'd asked to get involved in a project, and uh, we just coordinated just the, the corporate requirements, etc. So I wanted to just so the commissioner can understand what we're talking about. Each of Silver Sun and Wild Lines is a separate separate syndicate. entities. That's right. It's separate, separate shareholders. Entity. Separate entities, separate shareholders. Yeah. They're, they're, in total, one company had 15 shareholders and one had eight, but there are only two common shareholders between the two entities. So, and, and the, the two didn't have a majority stake in either company. And each of those companies was investing in a piece of property or multiple yep. pieces of property? Yeah, that's correct, buying land. And they were buying land with the intention of redeveloping the land? That's right. Initially, one company was to, uh, both were going to be rezoned, one was to develop and one was to actually on sell post rezoning. Now, have you heard the expression land banking? Yes. Is the type of business that Silver Sun and Wild Lines were engaged in land banking or something different from that? Uh, you, you could define it as land banking. Silver Sun, uh, definitely, because we, we didn't initially have the intention of developing that site. It was only to rezone it, then to resell. Uh, Wild Lines, from the very beginning, we intended to develop. So initially, it was obviously acquired to be rezoned and then roll into development. Right. Now, each of Wild Lines and Silver Sun initially initially made applications to Bankwest for finance before you'd resigned from Bankwest? That's correct. Were you involved, though, on the Bankwest end? No. All right. So, so, so I was never involved in any transactions where it involved me. My name's actually disclosed in the finance applications with the bank as a shareholder. Um, I wasn't a director of those companies at the time of the original applications. I only became a, a director after I'd handed my resignation in. And then you went to do the sort of financial management for the two that, companies. That's right. It's just with the project management of the uh, of those projects, plus the complete the uh, finalise the uh, the Zengold company that was mentioned earlier. All right now, all right now, each of Wildlines and Silver Sun was applying for a loan from Bankwest in about the middle of two thousand and seven. Uh, yes, and Silver Sun, I'm sorry, Wildlines ended up applying for a loan in two stages, is that That's right? That's correct. So we secured one property. Do you want me to say the amounts or? Yes, one yeah. of them was, oh yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so the first loan was for 1.75 million um, to secure one property. And then shortly after it came up, which we managed to get under contract, and then we increased the finance application to, to 6.6 .6 million. And the other facility for Silver Sun, we applied for a facility for 5.15 million. All right, we'll come back to Silver Sun in a moment. In a moment, in terms of the two blocks of land that Wild Lines had acquired, what was the expected development time frame? We, we anticipated approximately two years to get the development approval through, and then to roll into subdivision after that. And. Bankwest provided loans to purchase those. That's correct. To, to purchase those properties. Yeah, correct. And the you've set out the relevant terms of the facility in your statement. I'll just run through them. The interest the interest rate was to be the bank bill swap bid rate, which is referred to as BBSY. Correct. Plus a margin of one point seven five percent per annum. Yep. The loan to value ratio was to be sixty percent or less. 60% uh, for wild lines. For wild lines, yes. Sorry, we're just talking about wild lines yep. at the moment. 60% or less, is that right? Yeah, correct. Yep. There were some limited personal guarantees given in respect of wild yep, lines. Correct. In proportion to the shareholdings of the company. That's right, as a percentage of the loan balance. And interest and fees were able to be capitalised. <coughs> That's correct. Uh, only up to the maximum LVR limit. Uh, up to 50%. Up uh, to 60%, yeah. I'm sorry, up to 60%. Mm -hmm. The 
and the loan was for a two-year term? Yes. And at about that time when the loan was taken out, there was a valuation that was obtained of the property by Bankwest? Uh, that's correct. And the valuation, you've exhibited it to your statement, but it was on an as-is basis, is that, that right? That's correct, yeah. But the as-is basis took into account the potential as it was for development? That's right, it takes into consideration, but on a deferred cash flow basis. And perhaps just to assist the Commissioner, you've heard the expression evaluation on an as-developed basis? Yeah, on completion, yes. And could you just explain to the Commissioner what the difference is between an as-is and as-developed basis of valuation? Yeah, well, so an as-is is obviously someone, what someone would pay today for it. On completion, obviously, is once the development's built and the uh, end, end value of the total development. The Commissioner probably didn't need to have that <laughs> explained to him. So. <laughs> but that's my fault, not yours. The, let me ask you then about the hypothetical development and cash flow scenario that you were referring to. Yeah. Could you just explain what's the process by which hypothetical cash flows are used to arrive at evaluation? Well, the valuer has to adopt two methods of valuation, and generally on a land bank, it's going to be the as, sorry, um, a comparative sales evidence, then discounted cash flow if it's a development site. So in the discounted cash flow, they need to then take into consideration the planning reports that we provide, plus the engineering numbers, and run a theoretical model on the development with based on what the expected sale prices will be, and work backwards, then it derives at a as-is value of the land. And they... Depending on the complexity or the uh, risk associated with it, it, they adjust the internal rate of return. So they apply a higher internal rate of return if the uncertainty is there. So if, the, if it was zoned ready to go today, it's a lower internal rate of return. If it's got some time to go, well, obviously, it's a higher internal rate of return. And so if we just take that in a few steps at a time, in making or carrying out that hypothetical cash flow, one of the factors that goes into it is the internal rate of return that's to be achieved on the development. Yep, that's correct. And the internal rate of return takes into account the relative risk of the development? Y yes. And as there becomes more certainty about the development approval being obtained, the level of risk decreases? That's correct. And as the level of risk decreases, the IRR, internal rate of return that's required, is expected to decrease? Yep, that's correct. And as the IRR decreases, what effect does that then have on the value of the property? Well, the value improves. The, the value goes up. Goes up in value, that's right. All right. And when the property was valued by Bankwest in August of 2007, sorry, when the Wildlines property was valued in August of 2007, what was the value arrived at by the valuer. I'm not sure if it was August. Well, that was, is that the second valuation? The August, yes, it's MLA, it, to help you perhaps, you go to MLK5. And go to page dot five six one nine in the top corner. I yeah, oh, just, I just it was um, dated in uh, June. So oh, I'm sorry, the valuation date was June, 18 June 2007. Yep, yeah, that's correct. Right. Yeah, you said August. I was just I apologize. Sure. And the the as is valuation we can see as at 18 June 2007 for the two blocks of land was 11 million dollars. Yep, yeah, that's correct. Right, and so if we then move from that to Silver Sun. Silver Sun also took out an application or made an application for a loan in 2007. That is correct. And it was buying just one block of land. That's right. But a different property, obviously, from what Wildlines was yeah, That's correct. With. And you've already mentioned that the amount of the loan was $5.15 million. That's correct. And the time frame for the wild, for the Silver Sun development, what was that? Well, that was just a rezoning process, but because it was a major site and it hadn't um, 
gone very fast through the process. It was estimated in between three to five. Obviously, three was the perfect scenario. Everything lined up. Um, five was probably more realistic expectation. Right. And the price that was paid for that site was $10.3 uh, million. Dollars. Is yep, that that's right? That's correct. And the loan that... Sorry, what was the price? $10.3 million. Yes. And there was a valuation that was obtained at about that time that valued it at $10.3 million. That's correct. And the loan that was obtained then from Bankwest was for effectively half of the purchase price. That's correct. The rest of it was funded by equity for the yeah, investors. That's right, cash equity. Yeah. All right. And the conditions that attached to that loan were but not quite the same as for wild lines? Uh, it's similar, but not the same. There's the interest rate was still BBSY <laughs> plus 1.75%. That's correct. The loan to value ratio was 50% rather than 60%. That's correct. There were no guarantees that were That's required. That's correct. It was non-recourse lending. Uh, interest and fees were able to be capitalised. Yep, the same as wild lines, yep. And the loan was for a three-year term <laughs> rather than a two-year term. That's correct. Right. Now, in 2008, there was a review that happened of the wild lines, lo wild lines loan. Uh, I think well, both of them would have been reviewed at some point, but yeah, the, the following year. One, it, they were both reviewed in relation to wild lines. Yep. Its interest rate increased. Uh, yes. The yep. margin went from 1.75% to 2.25%. Yeah, that's correct. And did you discuss that rise with Bankwest? Uh, yes, I discussed it with the, uh, the relationship manager. And who was the relationship manager at the time? Uh, Mr Andrew Steele. And was it explained to you why there was that increase was, well, in the it, margin? It, it was, and uh, it, it, which is unusual to increase the rate during a term of facility at an annual review event. It, it doesn't happen very, very often. I can't recall doing it myself. So it, it, the bank was repricing its book was the answer. And, uh, and so we had to uh, grin and bear it. There wasn't a change, though, in the rate for Silver Sun? No. I think, though, that that facility was reviewed a month or two earlier. Oh, I see. And so we missed that, that one and got the next one. And then in 2009, the Wild Lines loan was coming, or facility was coming to an end because it yep. was for two years. That's correct. And did you go and have a meeting with Bankwest to discuss where the facility was at? Uh, yes. Was Wildlines going to need to refinance that loan? We're going to need to roll it over, that's right. Had the development approval come through at that stage? Uh, uh, no, it didn't come through. And what was the... That was obviously not what you'd expected. What was the reason for that? The reason being was the Department of Planning Infrastructure in the local area managed to get a uh, federal grant and they wanted to widen the area of rezoning. And so not just do our, you know, 400 acres, they wanted to do a bigger rezoning. And so because they received the federal government grant, they put our submission on hold so they could expand the area. And uh, that held up the uh, process. And can we bring up MLK 11? This should be RCD.0024.0014.0014. <coughs> now, can you just explain to us, Mr. Kelly, what is this document? Uh, that, sorry. That uh, document is my pre-meeting notes. So, because we obviously called the meeting to, with our manager, say his name or? Yes. Yes, yeah, so Paul Chapman to actually discuss the rollover and also the development facility going forward. So in the lead up to the meeting, I prepared notes for discussion points. Uh, so that way, there was a number of discussion points I wanted to address with him and uh, discuss. And uh, when we got to the meeting, obviously, uh, we got enlightened. Did you go through this, these notes as to what you wanted no. to discuss? No, the, the meeting got called uh, short. And why did you not go through because uh, you know. his opening statement was that the banks um, would like us to refinance the facilities at the uh, at, at uh, expiry. Would what? Sorry. 
to refinance our facilities. So to take our facilities and go. I see, the bank, just to be clear what you mean, refinance, not refinance with Bank West, refinance with somebody else. It's right, externally. All right. And was that what you were expecting going into that meeting? <laughs> no. And why did that cause the meeting to be cut short? I wasn't sure if he was fully informed, because he was a new manager, of, 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 of what he was actually saying. You know, to, to, uh, to cause obviously we're long-standing customers, obviously I'd bank there all my life sort of thing. And uh, to go into a meeting where we all upbeat about our project and then to uh, cut us off at the knees and say that, oh, um, no, we don't want to extend uh, facilities, you've got to go. Um, it was a bit of a shock. So I said to him that I think you better go and just talk to someone more senior and put something in writing to us because um, what you're saying, you know, is pretty significant, especially given the timing. Obviously, we're talking June 2009 and obviously the peak of the GFC, I think, was, was it April 2009? So we've just, you know, going through a bit of turbulent time. And, uh, yeah, so we, we weren't expecting it at all. And... Mr Chapman did then put that sentiment in writing? Eventually, yeah, a couple of weeks later, he sent an email. And did you begin looking to see if you could find finance with somebody else? Uh, yeah, immediately. So after that meeting, I had discussions with uh, a finance broker that we uh, use in our facilities and uh, to find out you know, what our options are because obviously I took it offensively in the way that it was communicated, it just dropped on us. We called the meeting. It wasn't as if the bank had um, called us in and sat us down and wanted to talk about something and work a stage process. It was just dropped on us. And how did you go trying to find other finance? Well, the timing with the GFC didn't make things because obviously all the banks were not lending, uh, especially on property. And so the answers we got obviously weren't very uh, enthralling. Now, having confirmed, I'm, I should just show you, if we go to MLK 12. Which is RCD.0024.0014.0016. This is the email on the 22nd of June, 2009. <coughs> that's the one you were referring to sent a couple of weeks later. That, that's correct. And then there was a slight softening in position from the bank. In, in this email? No, not in this email. If we go to the next email, which is rcd.0024.0014.0017, which is MLK13. So this is then sent about eight days later, on the 2nd of July, by Mr Chapman to you? That's right. So you had further discussions with... Um the credit department of the bank, and and yeah, the, the approach was saying obviously if we enhance the position, uh, that we may be able to get a, a continuation. And so the position being put forward was that the LVR would drop from sixty percent to forty five percent. That's correct. And the pricing would be expected to be BBSY plus 2.25 to 2.5 per cent with an extension fee of between 0.3 per cent and 0.5 per cent? Yeah, that's correct. And was there a further valuation that was obtained at about this time? That's course? right. So after the first meeting, uh, we got a valuation underway straight away because obviously you need a valuation to go and talk frankly with the banks you can talk indicatively and show them your previous reports but they're going to re require a current valuation so we'd already had one underway and the bank agreed to send their instruction letters to that valuer so the report could be assigned to them and if we bring that up which is exhibit number 14 CBA.4000.0058.7306. So this is the valuation from the 9th of July 2009. Did you see this at the time? No. Okay. And then if we go to page 2, which is .7310. see the valuation 
as at 9 July 2009 on an as-is basis is $12.7 million. That's right, inclusive GST. Inclusive of GST. So that's actually an increase in the valuation that had been obtained yeah, from in the, 2007. That's right, the previous valuation was $11 million exclusive of GST. And, and from your perspective, was the increase in value expected? Uh, yes. And why was that? Because we'd progressed the, uh, the rezoning at that we are just about to lodge our um, development application, et cetera, so we'd de-risk it. We'd done our, our water monitoring and a number of other environmental assessment reports, et cetera, over the, over the property. And you then had some further negotiation with the bank over the terms on which they would roll over the wild bull. Oh, shit. You're right, Mr Kelly. The disc a bit short. That's right. You then had some further negotiation over the terms on which Bank West would roll over the facility. That's correct. And they ended up making an offer to you on the 1st of September 2009, which we'll bring up, which is tab 15 or exhibit 15, CBA.4000.0072.0134. <coughs> and the LVR was in that offer, was that changed at all? Uh, I think it was still 60%, but reducing to 50% by a given date. All right, and perhaps if we bring that up on, if we bring that up on page dot zero one three six. Yeah, so by the 31st of October, the following month, we had to reduce the LVR from 60 to 50%. So I think that's 540,000. So I just want to understand how this happened. Was this, did the bank just decide to go for 50% or was there some process of negotiation? No, it was, it was negotiated. So obviously they had 45% in their email as, a, as um, where they'd like to, we went back with an offer of 50%. Um, and obviously we could do it in a relatively quick period of time and uh, they accepted that offer. So it was a submission submitted via our broker uh, to the bank, which they uh, agreed to. And when you say do it in a reasonably quick period of time, you mean you'd be able to reduce the LVR down to 50% within a few months, within two months? Well, within, within two months, yeah. All right. And if we go back a page to dot, 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 zero, one, three, five, You see the facility expiry date, this is the offer being made on the 1st of September 2009, is only being extended to the 31st of October 2009. That's right. So this is being extended so that you can reduce the LVR. That's right. But your understanding was if you reduce the LVR, then they would roll over the facility That's for right. a further period of time. That's right. We're, we're talking, I think we had asked for about a 16 month extension and uh, they ended up giving us a 14 month extension. And we also see the varied interest rate has gone up, the margin on BBSY has gone up to 2.65. That's right. And that seems to be on its face higher than that range that had been set out in Mr Chapman's email. That's right. It's part of the negotiation. We offered a higher rate because obviously we we're only offering a 50% LVR, not a 45% LVR. So in our submission, we would have had the 2.65% margin because we didn't give something away. There could have been further pushback. And how did you manage to get the LVR down to 50% by... Just, just the, the, the syndicate members obviously put the hat around and uh, we raised the money from the members and uh, paid the facility down. And, and we also prepaid or paid the loan down as well, but, but not on a permanent reduction basis so that we could redraw it to pay for working capital going forward. I think we transferred it just over one million odd dollars into the loan account by that date. By the 31st of October. Yeah, I think it was on the 30th of October we transferred the funds because we had to coincide with the rollover of the bill. And so then you extended, or then the loan was extended to the 31st of December 2010? Uh, was it December or was it October? Oh, you think it might have been 31st oh, it, of October? In any event, it was extended to the end yeah. of 2010. Yeah. 
And in the meantime, Silver Sun was a three-year loan, so it was going to run until August of 2010 anyway. That's correct. And you recall we've already looked at, there was no change in the rate in 2008. Not on Silver Sun, no. And, I'm sorry, what was that? Yeah, yeah, no change to the rate for Silver Sun in 2008. That's right. Which is, yeah. But in 2009, there was a change in the rate for Silver Sun. It went, the margin went up to 2.65%. Uh, I, I, I believe so. I can bring that up if that helps. If we go to MLK-49. This is an email from Mr Chapman to you about Silver Sun. Yep, that's correct. Yeah, so yeah, the margin increased from <laughs> 175 to uh, 265. All right. And so that's... 0.9. I'm sorry, say that again? A 0.9 margin. Yes. And was that something that you'd expected? Given our treatment on the Wild Lines facility, it, it wasn't. We weren't shocked when they uh, decided to bump the rate on the other facility. You see it says our submission saw an approval for extension to 31 August 2010. That's correct, yeah. Do you know what that means? Oh, I think he's just used the wrong terminology. He should have just said, I've done the annual review and as part of the review process we've deemed the, uh, the pricing needed to be increased. Because the loan was already going to run until August That's 2010. That's correct, yeah. All right. And so did you raise any issue with him about... Oh, not not formally, no. We just uh, grinned and bared it because the the dramas that we'd just gone through with wild lines at the same time, the last thing we needed was the bank to call a material change of circumstances and call up our facility. And then if we come then to 2010, in August of 2010, you had a meeting with Mr Steele, do you recall that? Yeah. What, what uh, date was it, sir? Perhaps it was on the 6th of August 2010. I think if we bring up MLK-19. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right, yeah, with Sean Lawson as well, the BDM and myself and another director. And could you just explain to the Commissioner, this document is headed file note. Is it your file note? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, and when did you prepare it? <laughs> well, this was prepared after the meeting. Right. The, uh... And one of the things you record is about where, Mr. where it was explained to you that Bankwest was at in terms of their attitude to property finance. Could you just... That's correct. Explain that to the Commissioner. Yeah, because obviously in the previous year, in the June the previous year, we were advised that the bank, because of the su such success in lending to property, they were overexposed, now wanted to reduce their loan book. So this was another year on, and obviously they were treating customers, I assume, the same as they are treating us. So some customers would have been able to refinance or sell down or get away. So the first question was, are you still overexposed? <laughs> and the answer, obviously, unfortunately, was yes. And then... And then the, uh, the next part of it, obviously, they, they were saying that there's still the bank under instruction from the CBA, they still have a strategy to exit the property exposures at loan expiry, <laughs> i.e. not to offer new facility terms. terms. Do you, I should ask, do you, do you now recall this conversation or is this really just based on what you took down in your notes, bearing in mind it's eight years ago? <laughs> I say, you don't forget. It doesn't happen every day of the week that, you know, you get told to, to, to refinance. And there was then a revaluation of Silver Sun at about that time? That's right, because the, uh, normally the bank does valuations every three years and the original term was set for three years to coincide with the revaluation. And there was some discussion, obviously, had about the revaluation because uh, they, they mentioned to me that the um, their internal valuer... Phil Edwards, you can say his name, yeah. Yes. Uh, it was noted that on the file that, that uh, our value would go down maybe 30 to 40% lower for Silverson. 
right, and we'll, we'll come in a moment to what the valuation showed, but at about this time, both Silver Sun and Wild Lines were also moved into CAM, is that right? That's right, in, in September. Of 2010. And who was the person or manager that you were dealing with in CAM? It's initially uh, Greg O'Brien. And was it explained to you why you were moved into CAM? Well, the bank considered us to be high-risk customers. At that point in time, had there been any default that you were aware of no. by Wild Lines or Silverstone? No, no, there's no mispayments, no misreporting covenants. And who informed you that there was going to be a further valuation of the Silver Sun property? Uh, well, I actually informed the bank that it was required in June in one of my reports to the bank and asked them for the names of the valuers that we could use because the bank, although it had a panel of um, half a dozen valuers who, who were specialised in, in Globo land bank valuing, the bank selectively decided who would value and um, would tell us you know, to use particular firms. So that gives us a choice of two to pick. So we obviously asked for details in June, but never received any reply or response. And at this meeting, obviously, it was raised again that we needed to get the valuation underway because the facility was coming up for expiry. And were you given a couple of valuers to choose from? We were given two, yes. All right. And of those, you picked one and got them? That's right. We picked Savills. And when Savills did the valuation, did they do it on your instructions or on the bank's instructions? We, we negotiate the fee because obviously with valuers, depending on how biz they are, etc., their, their pricing can change re by reasonable sums. And then once we negotiate a fee, uh, the bank sends instruction letters. All right. And what happened to the value when it was revalued by...? Well, the value went up. Did it? Perhaps if we bring this up, it's Exhibit 57 to Mr Kelly's statement, CBA.0517.0096.1710. I want the number again, yes. Mr. Hodge. It's CBA.0517.0096.1710. So this is that 2010 valuation of the Silver Sun land. That's right. And if we go to page 2.1711. <coughs> See the market value had now gone up to thirteen and a half million dollars. That's correct. Yeah, thirteen and a half inclusive GST. Yeah. I'm sorry, inclusive of GST. Yeah. And what effect did that have then on the LVR ratio for Silver Sun? Well, well once you adjust for the GST under the margin scheme, the value does get reduced back to I think thirteen point one two million. So the LVR went from 50% down to 37.2%, I think. Right. And did that lead to any change in the pricing for Silver Sun? Uh, yes, unfortunately. <laughs> Perhaps if we, well, sorry, uh, the pricing had already changed by We were by up that to 2.65 and then I think we got offered uh, I'm not sure if it jumped to 3.95. I'll, I'll bring it up for you just to help you so you don't have to guess, Mr Kelly. Can we go to RCD.0024.0014.0113? Which is... Thank you. So this is the variation on the 6th of September 2010. Uh, correct, yeah. And this is effectively at the same time as Silver Sun and Wild Lines are moved into CAM. That's correct. 
And if we go to page two, which is... But, but this letter was issued prior to the report being available. I'm sorry, I, let's just make sure we've got these things lined up. Yep. This letter of offer is issued at about the same time that Wild Lines and Silver Sun go into CAM? Correct. The, when you say the report, you're referring to the valuation report? That's correct. The valuation report didn't come until the late October month. 2010, or uh, sometime uh, in October. Uh, early October, probably, yeah. And if we go to page dot zero one one four, we see the margin then went up to three point nine five percent in the letter of offer. Yep, that's correct. And do you recall whether that was I'm sorry, and you also see the facility expiry date is the thirtieth of October two thousand and ten? That's correct. And do you recall whether that was accepted? Uh, that letter, yeah, we had no choice but to accept that letter. And then the valuation occurred, which increased the value. And That's I right. think then to come back to the question I asked you before, was there any change in the pricing once the valuation came in? We, we did get a concession from 395 to 350, uh, but I, I can't recall the actual date. Uh, so it did come down. Um, I just, yeah, not sure the date. I have to go back to the actual letters to to determine it. I, th I think it will come to this mm. that that might have occurred in the following year, yeah, Mr. It, Kelly. Yeah, it could have been the following year. And then, but there was no change in wild lines rate at that time in 2010. No, because the facility hadn't quite matured. And then you had a meeting with. Bank West on the 29th of November 2010. Do you recall that? Uh, uh, yes. And the purpose of that meeting was to discuss a further extension of the facilities for both Silver For both, both facilities, that's correct. And at that meeting, which you've got a file note of if it would help you, what was mm. the attitude that was expressed by the bank about continuing to be involved in property? Uh, actually, if you just bring it up, because obviously there's a number of meetings, and I just we want to make sure. We bring up So perhaps if I phrase the question like this, was there any change? Not, not in their attitude for us to leave, that they still wanted us to leave, but they did actually acknowledge it. it's uh, extremely difficult to refinance in the current circumstances. Yeah. Obviously, they um, commented that if our gearing hadn't gone down, we, wouldn't, we, we would be unlikely to provide any extensions. So it's lucky we got a high evaluation. And at that point in time, you were told that the bank had extended the facility or would extend the facility through until the 28th of February 2011? Yeah, that's correct. And can you recall why it was that the... I'm sorry, can you recall a discussion about a, a greater extension having been sought? Well, Greg actually mentioned at the meeting that he had actually applied to go to 31st of May, so give us like six, seven months extension, but he got knocked back and uh, they only allowed it to go to 28th of February the following year. And so as a result of this meeting, did you understand that there would be some further conditions that the bank would require in order to extend the loan? Uh, no, because you had the... I think he had the files on the desk at the meeting. I think it's in the, uh, my file note. They actually had the approved files on the desk during the discussion. They'd already come out from credit. And uh, obviously we discussed pricing was obviously um, a sensitive issue um, and obviously any additional terms and conditions, but there was nothing other, uh, that was disclosed. And then a letter of offer to vary the facilities eventually came from Bankwest? That that's right. And that came on the 23rd of December 2010? No, it's, it was dated the 23rd. I think I received on the 30th of December. All right. And but, that but is... The Christmas period. I beg your pardon? With the Christmas period and all the rest of it, that's probably why it was late. And then that is tab 24 to your statement, which is rcd.0024.4.0027.
And yeah, that's correct. We go to page dot zero zero two eight. We see the varied facility expiry date was to be the 28th of February 2011. Yeah, that's correct. And how did the conditions that were set out in this offer to extend compare with what had been discussed at the meeting at the end of November? There's some, uh, some additional special undertakings included in, in the uh, letters for both Wildlands and Silver Sun were, were the, main, the main issues. Um, there's obviously there's some typo errors and I think they missed a guarantor position on one of the letters, one of the letters and um, they're referring to the wrong offer letters from the previous correspondence and there's a few other bits and pieces but obviously I received on the 30th, I wrote back to them on the 31st of December because obviously we wanted to have this resolved so we had a facility in place because we'd gone you know a good month between having a, an approval on the guy's desk in a meeting to actually getting a letter and the letter was incorrect or and Incorrect, but also with varied terms than what was discussed and I thought agreed. And you referred to having sent a letter on the 31st of December. Can we bring that up? That's tab 25, rcd.0024.0014.0039. So this is, you, you sent two letters, one on behalf of Wildlines, one on behalf of Silver Sun. Yeah, that's correct. And you sent it to Omar, Varinda, and also to Sean, who is uh, Sean? Uh, Lawson. And are they in CAM or are they in... No, they're in commercial banking, but Greg O'Brien from CAM was assisting them in managing the files. Okay. And we'll just look at one of the letters, but you raise a few different issues in the letter with the new terms. One is about the directors giving an undertaking as to refinancing. Yeah, that's correct. And can you explain to the Commissioner what the issue was? Well, they wanted us to give an unconditional undertaking or have an unconditional finance approval by the 28th of February, which obviously committing, trying to cross-secure cross or cross-collateralise both of the loan facilities which have been standalone facilities. So uh, just try to break that down. What they asked you to do in relation to wild lines appeared to be to give an undertaking to have refinance Silver Sun, is that right? That's correct. And you note, maybe that's a typo, but in any event, it's impossible for you to give that undertaking. That's right. For, for, the, for the Wild Lines company to give that undertaking for the Silver Sun company, yes. And there was also an issue about a six months interest deposit. Can you explain what that was? Yeah, the bank decided that um, we, we would put six months interest on deposit in an account in addition to obviously um, servicing the loan interest going forward. So basically, in quasi, you know, another principal repayment off the debt by having six months interest on deposit, which we couldn't touch. And were those, either of these things that we've just talked about, things that have been raised at that meeting in November of 2010? Uh, no. And did you receive a reply directly to this letter? Uh, no. And is the next thing that happened on the 13th of January 2011, Bankwest issued you with a breach notice? That's correct. And if we bring that up, which is tab 26. So there was one issued for each of Wild Lines at Silver Sun? That's correct. We're just looking at the moment at the Wild Lines one. This is Wild Lines? Yes, that's correct. And the breach was not having repaid the facility on the 31st of December 2010. Uh, and, and it starts off differently, so you have not accepted the bank's variation of facilities letter extending the facilities to the 28th of February 2011 and you have not repaid the facility upon the expiry on the 31st of December 2010. So obviously we could have accepted their letter or repay the facility. All right. Now, this doesn't say anything about default interest? Uh, no. But was there default interest that started being charged on the loans? There was um, overdue interest, which is the bank's <coughs> default interest 
But we had a meeting, which you're going to come to, I think, on the 24th of January 2011. Well, why don't we work it through in that way then? Yeah. If we go to the meeting on the 24th of January 2011, again, you took a file note of that meeting. That's correct. If we bring up RCD.0024.0014.0042. And so at this meeting, you've got Greg O'Brien, who's from CAM. That's right, but Greg had been involved since September. And also yes. Sean Lawson, who's from the commercial, commercial part of the bank. Part of the bank. Yep. All right. We also had a Melinda Rivers from um, CAM as well. And what was explained to you was the bank was the bank was fully aware that it was extremely difficult to refinance at That's that time? Right. It said the bank was now taking a different approach to clients with land facilities as they are fully aware that it's extremely difficult to refinance at present. And was there a discussion about default interest? Uh, yes. And what was the discussion? That they wouldn't charge default interest whilst we were negotiating the loan extensions. All right. And... Was there a negotiation over the terms on which the loans might be extended? Yeah, yes. And I think we see that at the bottom of the page. For Silver Sun, the idea was there'd be a 12-month extension with interest to be paid three months in advance. That's correct. And for Wild Lines, there'd be an extension until the 30th of September 2011. This is over the page on dot zero zero four three. I'm sorry, there'd be a 12-month extension again with interest to be paid three months in advance. Yep, that's correct. And there'd also be guarantees that would be given in respect of wild lines. That's correct, L limited guarantees. All right. And then if we go to tab 28, which is RCD.0024.0014.0044. And can we go to the second page, dot zero zero four five? So taking these emails first in time, the first in time is an email from you to, I'm not sure why, it's no, oh, I'm sorry, it's the whole email address is redacted, but the name is not yes. subject to non-publication direction. That's Omar Varinda. That's correct. And. Mr. Verinda was in which section of Bankwest? In the commercial banking section. And you were sending him an email in mid-February 2011 because you just received a statement for wild lines? That's correct. And the issue was that you were being charged 8.81%? That's correct. And... What you'd previously been charged was about 7.45 to 7.5%. That's correct. All right. And you made the point that when, they'd, when you'd met in January, the bank said it'd keep charging a similar rate to what the new terms were. That's now, this, I want to be clear, this is just for wild lines, which was on a lower interest rate anyway compared to Silver Sun. That's correct. So the Silver Sun rate that you were being charged was approximately well, what it ought to have been. Well, it's, it's around about 8.8, .8, that's right, or just under. And then on the 27th of February, you sent a follow-up email to see what was going on? That's right. And to find out how the loan extension? That's correct. And then on the 28th of February, you received, if we go to the first page, an email from Ms Rivera? That's correct. Now, let me summarise this. This email seems to say that what had been discussed at the meeting was that the bank would consider extending the facilities if the Silver Sun shareholders provided guarantees and serviceability of both facilities could be demonstrated. Yes. And then there were requests for evidence to support recurring cash flow capacity. Yes. And there also appeared to be a request for evidence to support shareholders' recurring flow capacity. That's in the fourth paragraph. Yes. And 
then the only response with respect to the interest rate was in relation to your query about the interest rate for wild lines, we note that the facility is expired and the bolt rate is 18.81%. That's correct. But, but just so you get an understanding, the difference between the standard rate and the default rate is an additional 100, or just short of 100,000 per month. And again, just so the Commissioner understands that and we can break that down, you mean the difference between being charged 18.81% and being charged 7.5% or the difference between being charged 8.8% and 7.5%? No, no, the difference between, the, the, say, 7.5 and 18.8%. Yes, so the at the normal interest rate of 7.5% that had been charged for wild lines, wild lines that was $100,000 less per month in interest on compared the, to... On the combined facilities but for both wild lines and silver sun, because we had, let's just say, $10 million in exposure and 10%. Yeah, it was all $11 million exposure, so yes, another $1.1 million in broad numbers. And now, did you, were you surprised to receive Ms Rivera's email? Uh, yes. And why was that? Uh, because we'd agreed at the meeting and uh, also um, her attitude, oh, I not say attitude, she sent that email on her final day of secondment with Bank West, and and uh, when I sent my report, but my reply had bounced back that she'd obviously left the bank, and uh, and then I had to refer on to uh, Greg O'Brien. Well, maybe if I just at least show you the documents so the commissioner can see what you're talking about. Having got that email on the 28th of February, you responded to Ms. Rivera on the 1st of March. That's correct. And we can see that at tab 29, if we bring that up, rcd.0024.0014.0046. <clears throat> this is the letter that you sent back to Ms Rivera. That's correct. You explain on the first page that your file notes from the meeting confirms that there was no discussion or request made by the bank for the shareholders of Wildlines to provide the bank with a demonstration of serviceability. That's correct. And you note that you'd previously provided the bank with tax returns and assets and liabilities for the major shareholders. That's right, for, for wild loans, yeah. And then if we go over to dot zero zero four seven. Yeah, actually, just that table's quite important. It, sure, if we go back to dot zero zero four six. Yeah. Just that was one of the, the main shareholders and just from his reoccurring business income could demonstrate serviceability of all facilities. So, which they already had that information on their files because he, he was one of the shareholders that was in both companies. And then if we go over to dot zero zero four seven, you note that the email, we see this about a, th a quarter of the way down the page that in her email, Ms Rivera had said that the bank needs sufficient evidence to support the recurring cash flow capacity to meet all future development approval expenses, costs of the Silver Sun development. Yes. And again, you say this detail hadn't been requested by the bank at the meeting. Uh, yes. And then you make a few more points about information that hadn't been requested at the meeting. Yeah, that's correct. And then if we go over to page dot zero zero four eight. In the middle of the page, you say cash flow forecasts for each project are attached for your reference. Yes. So insofar as the bank had asked on the 28th of February 2011 for cash flow forecasts, you provided them the next day. That's right. And then you queried why it was that the bank wanted cash flow forecasts for each shareholder. That's right, to, to, to go into each shareholder's private business. And that request was never pressed by the bank? No, because we, we provided information just from one shareholder that could demonstrate the serviceability. So I didn't see the need to go to 22 other shareholders and uh, ask them for all their personal information. And then can we bring up RCD.0014.0011.0011?
Now, just to cover off on what happened about the interest rate, this is a statement for Silver Sun. Yes. And we see there's a note, a handwritten note at the bottom of the page, 31 March 2011. Yes. Whose writing is that? That's my writing. All right. And could you just tell the Commissioner what that note says and what it means? Yeah. So on, during March, we received the, uh, the letter on the second page. It, um, on the front page, it says, obviously, approved maximum facility limit zero, balance of account 4.9 million. Uh, and on the back of it, our interest rate was 18.81%. So I phoned um, Omar from the bank and just to confirm what rate that they were going to apply to this facility, because given it had expired and we hadn't accepted the letter, and he said that they'll apply a 10% discount to each of the limits to bring it back to 8.81% instead of 18.81. Right. And then can we bring up, oh, sorry, I tender that document, Commissioner. Letter Bankwest to Silver Sun. Have we got a date on it somewhere? It doesn't. We can see it's for the period up to 15 March 2011. It has statement number 28 on it. If I just call it Letter Bankwest Silver Sun, March 2011, RCD 00140011 will become Exhibit Three eight nine. Thank you, Commissioner. And then, can we bring up RCD dot zero zero one four dot zero zero one one dot zero 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 four? Now, this is another set of emails that you exchanged with Mr O'Brien in March of 2011. You ask him if he has heard from Phil Edwards about the Silver Sun valuation report. Can you That's right. explain to the Commissioner what you were trying to find out and why? Yeah. So, so the valuation report was completed in early October and as part of the internal process of the bank, they have a, their internal values review the external valuers. And Mr Edwards was one of the bank's internal valuers and because he had an issue with the report, he wouldn't sign off on the valuation report because he had forecast it previously that the value was going to go down, but the actual value went up. And uh, even though we're five months later, he still hadn't signed off on the report or, or had only just signed off on the report. And that was the information that you're giving us. You obviously weren't working in the bank, but this was no. information that you'd been told by whom? Well, obviously, Greg O'Brien. Right. And so then you're following up Mr O'Brien and he then tells you on the 24th of March that he's now submitted his paper to Les Nathan. That's right, he's one of the senior credit managers. All right. And then I tend to that document, Commissioner. Uh, emails between Kelly and O'Brien, March uh, 2011, RCD 0014 0011 0004, exhibit 3.90. And then can we bring up one last document from March, which is RCD.0014.0011.0008. And so this is, when we look at the chain of emails, this I think is what you're referring to before. On the 1st of March in the morning at 10.31 a.m., you sent the letter that we looked at before together with the cash flow budgets. That's correct. And then you got a reply from Mr O'Brien saying Melinda has finished her secondment with Bank West, so he's back to running the matter. That's correct. All right. I tend to that document, Commissioner. Uh, emails between Kelly and O'Brien, March 2011, RCD 0014 0011, Exhibit 3.91. And then in... May of 2011, you were able to 
or you were taken out of CAM, is that right? Uh, I'm not sure it was May. It, it might have been. Well, I'll show you a document which might help. Can we bring yeah. up Exhibit 31 to did, did, Mr. Kelly's statement, yeah. RCD.0024.0014.0050? Would you like me to say the number again? It's RCD.0024.0014.0050. It's tab 31 to Mr. Kelly's statement. Thank you. So this is an email sent by Mr. O'Brien on the 20th of May 2011 to you? Yep, that's correct. And he's telling you that both facilities have been extended through until the 30th of October 2011. Yep, that's correct. And he says management of file is being passed to property finance unit and I believe Tim Lyons will be the contact. Yep, that's correct. So I just now want to try to understand the various segments of the bank that we've gone through. The loan was originated in commercial, is that Commercial right? banking, that's correct. And then for a period of time from 2010 through until this date, we're looking at May 2011, it's then being dealt with by CAM. CAM and commercial in consultation banking. consultation with commercial banking. That's correct. And then it gets moved to property finance. It was intended to be moved. It was, sorry, it was, you were told it was going to be moved That's to correct. property finance. Was it in fact moved to property finance? <coughs> Eventually it was in January of the following year. Okay. Did it, for a while did it stay with the commercial part of the bank? I believe so, yeah. Right. And there was, in terms of just walking through what happens then with the interest rates, for wild lines, you were offered a variation, which we'll bring up now, which is tab 32 to the statement, which is RCD.0024.0014.0053. So this is the offer sent on the 30th of May. 2011? That's, that's correct. And if we go over to page dot zero zero five five, we see the margin is to be 3.95% now. That's correct. And it had previously been 2.65%. That's correct. And you then had some negotiation about the margin? I sent a letter back to the bank, but um, these letters weren't received uh, until sometime in June, I think. Yes, the, the fact that the offer's dated the 30th of May 2011 right. doesn't mean you actually got it in May of 2011. No, no, it was much, much later. But the process was you got it, you then complained about the interest rate? That's right. So I, I had facilities for uh, letters for both facilities, and uh, there was a number of differences, number of mistakes in the documents so we sent back a letter the following day trying to get the facility bedded down and obviously one of the big issues was the uh, they increased the interest rate um, outside of our discussions or negotiations and eventually the bank agreed to have a margin of 3.5 percent that's right and there were then a series of short extensions to each of the facilities? That's right. They were extended first to the 31st of October 2011, which are the offers we're looking at now. Uh, yeah, I, I believe so, yes. And then to the 31st of January 2012? I'd have to check the letters, but if you've got letters, then I'd say yes. Right, but it, then, it, but then, there may have only been a month or two at a time, maybe not that three months. And then can I suggest to the 31st of March 2012? So yes. from the end of January to the end of March. Yes. And then it looks like for wild lines, there was no further extension that was granted, but the loan just carried on. That's correct. And 
in January of 2012, did you approach the bank about financing the next stage of development? That's right. So once we got to meet our new uh, account managers, uh, we had a meeting and put forward our proposal for financing the development of the Wild Lines property. Um, and we, we gave them a detailed application. And at about the same time, did you also put forward an application to refinance the next stage of development for Silver Sun as well? Yes, we also applied for an extension to Silver Sun at the same time. And at the time, that is in early 2012, what was the feedback that you received from the bank? We, we actually received positive feedback that the bank was at. I think it would be in my file note, whatever. The this description for the wild lines facility, the, the account manager said, oh, it's in our sweet spot. So, um, you know, this is something that we'll, we'll, we'll be recommending. And also for the Silver Sun, they were happy to recommend the extension of that facility also. But and bear in mind, we're already up to our second manager in property finance, even though we never met the first manager. The second manager is Jason Black. And, and Lee Curtis. All right. And there was a, a uh, previous manager that you Well, met. initially, Greg O'Brien said we're going to deal with Tim Lyons. Mm -hmm. And then you got to June 2012. Had the, had the approval come through from Bankwest? Uh, no. And what did you do in June 2012 for Wild Lines? Well, because of the delays, when you apply for something in January and you've got to June and you still don't have an approval, but you're getting some positive feedback, uh, we also were able to lodge an application with a new financier and, uh, and I think it was 11th of June we were able to send a letter to Bank West to say that we're in a position to refinance the Wild Lines facility. And so you moved Wild Lines to somebody else? That's correct. And then for Silver Sun it appears there was another short extension of the facility from the 18th of September 2012 to the 15th of November 2012. That's right, but, but there's a gap, obviously, of Where months. Where you had no approval no. in place. Yeah, so from March to September of that year. And you then with the Silver Sun facility? We were actually able to refinance the Silver Sun facility also. All right. Also. All right. And have both developments, or have both developments, or what's happened to each of the developments? Uh, the, the Wild Lines has been developed. It's, it's still ongoing because they're multi-stage projects. Um, the facilities um, that we borrowed to complete the first stage uh, were repaid in 15 months once we refinanced, so it had zero debt. We borrowed some money for subsequent stage, but it has no debt and I know, eight, nine, nine million dollars in net assets. Uh, the other facility is um, a, a very large project. We've actually just uh, held that because obviously in the Perth property market over the last few years has been on the on the downward slide, so uh, the syndicate members continue to support it today, and we've just put it on the shelf. Commissioner, I don't have any further questions. Mr Kelly. Mm -hmm. Mr Sherry. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Mr Kelly, um, the negotiations of the initial facilities <coughs> were both on an arm's length basis? That's right, through a, uh, a finance broker. Uh, no, actually, that's incorrect. The very first application was by the company director to the bank for wild lines, and then subs subsequent to that, we used an intermediary. And that included negotiation of the initial terms? That's correct. Um, by that I mean the duration, not, not the terms and conditions, but the duration? That's right. Um, and one of them was two years and one was three years, is that That's right? correct. And when it came to renegotiate an extension, that were those extensions also conducted on an arm's length basis? That's right. So the the, uh, the finance broker attended the meetings uh, with us, with the bank, and uh, the applications were submitted through the uh, finance broker. And in relation to Silver Sun, didn't you agree and negotiate and agree six extensions? Uh, Yep, that's correct. And in the case of Wild Lines, you negotiated and agreed five extensions? Yep, that's correct. 
and they were all negotiated on an arm's length basis? Uh, no, n not, not all of them. I, w I would have been involved in, heavily involved. The, the uh, person who was um, acting as our intermediary was well known to me and, uh, and I obviously assisted in all the negotiations. But as between the two syndicates and Bankwest, it was at arm's length, wasn't it? Between the syndicate, and the company the and the bank, it was arm's length. Yes. Yes. Commercial loans for two very substantial projects. Uh, yes. And can I ask you to be shown a document called CBA.4000.0074.0001? You see that email, Mr Kelly? Uh, yes, I see the email. It's an email from you, isn't it? That's correct. To whom? Uh, to Mr Andrew Steele from Bankwest Commercial. G'day, Andrew. Thank you for being very fair about the extension. Yep, this is in good. relation to the negotiations that went on in August 2009. That's correct. Which was the first variation, variation, variation. Uh, first extension, I should have said. The first extension for uh, wild lines. Um, can you explain why that email isn't in your statement? Uh, because my witness statement was uh, already getting pretty extensive and I didn't print out every single email. You printed that out extent. several emails and you printed out file notes. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you include the email where you said the bank had been very fair? At that point in time, post-GFC, when the bank told us to actually they weren't going to extend any facilities and we were able to actually negotiate an agreed position, we were actually quite relieved because we'd obviously gone into the marketplace and the lenders at the time were not giving us an alternative refinance. So to actually be, have some breathing space without being put to the sword, um, we were happy that we could actually get some breathing space and try and look further afield to see what other opportunities uh, were out there. So they were very fair? On that extension, and the pricing was at 265 which we agreed to. Yes, and yeah. I just want to ask you, why didn't you include that email in your statement? Uh, because I had probably hundreds of emails who, over who the period. Who chose the emails and other documents that went into your statement? Uh, I would have obviously chosen uh, the statements. Did you, did you do the first statement? No. no. I... I I did a, a first detailed summary. Well, I think I'm not sure how many pages, it might have been a dozen pages, detailing a sequence of events, etc., that was submitted. And are you seriously saying to the Commissioner that the reason that email's not there is just to save space? <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. No. Well, then why isn't it in your statement? Because that, with the time restraints, because obviously I'm running a business at the moment, the... Uh, the, the amount of work that's required to go and do a detailed witness statement and get every single thing uh, picked up. Uh, there was obviously some emails which I printed out and I had inches, piles of, uh, of correspondence uh, and obviously put forward, you know, relevant items, I thought. You've put in a lot of documents and, and statements in your witness statement about this very negotiation and you leave out the one email where you say the bank was being very fair. So you say this so just very coincidence? Just a moment, Mr Sherry. You Sorry. say this very negotiation. To what are you referring? I'm referring to negotiations in August 2009. You, hmm. Could you put the question again then? I did interrupt. I'll, I'll put it a different way, Your um, Commissioner. Mr Kelly, is it just a coincidence that the one email that says the bank was being very fair is omitted from your statement? No, because that email is obviously sent from me to Andrew, and unless I go through all my sent emails at that around that time to try and find it, it's not actually kept in my inbox. So when I receive emails from the bank, so I would have that bottom email, and that would be saved in a, in a folder in my inbox. Did you review this email when you were preparing your statement? Uh, I don't think I did. Thank you, Commissioner. Do you want to tender the email? Uh 
Mr. Oh, Sherry, it's, it's, an exhibit to, it's an exhibit to the next witnesses. Is it? Mr. Perry's statement, Sherry. Uh, Commissioner. Yes. Yes. yes, Mr. Hodge. Commissioner, I'm sorry, there's just one other thing I needed to confer with Mr. Perry. Mr. Perry, did you make a submission? No, I'm Mr. Kelly. I'm oh, sorry, Mr. Kelly, did you make a submission to the Royal Commission? Yes. And that was how the Royal Commission contacted you? That's correct. You but, did it but, through the web form? That's right, but it was only limited to 3,000 characters. And then I sent a follow up, detail, more detailed submission once I'd been contacted. And the Commission hasn't shown you the statement of Mr. Perry? It hasn't shown me that email. No, no, no. the statement. Well, oh, the, the statement of the Mr. Statement no. of Mr. Perry. No. Okay. Uh, that's it. Thank you, Commissioner. Yes. yes, thank you, Mr. Kelly. You may step down. You're excused.